Hey, honey? Yes? You know where I put my copy of Dragon Ball Z Sagas for the GameCube? Honey, just because we're married doesn't mean I have to keep track of your toys. What's this? And I actually forgot I owned this. What else is in the shelf? Tomb Raider Underworld is what I consider a guilty pleasure. Is it one of the best Tomb Raider games out there? Well, no, but this one I played quite a bit. At least the Xbox 360 PS3 versions. I have a copy of this game on my Xbox One, which finally allows me to try the Doppelganger DLC. But this is not that. This is the version that came out for the PlayStation 2. I have an interesting history playing Tomb Raider ports that are made for alternate consoles. I remember playing the Wii version of Tomb Raider Anniversary many years ago, and my aim was so bad that, well, if I was a lumberjack, the only thing safe in the woods would be the trees. I remember playing this port years ago, and then kind of forgot about it. So, since I'm completing my look at the Legend Trilogy, I figured, ah, what the hell, let's pop this one in and see how it fares. And it definitely was an interesting experience. I'm Eugene Morris of the Brotherhood of Gaming, and here's my review of Tomb Raider Underworld for the PlayStation 2. Now the story of Tomb Raider Underworld is the culmination of both Legend and Anniversary, as Lara Croft looks to find her mother and bring her back. Lara must now battle the combined forces of the two main antagonists from the first two games, Jacqueline Natla and Amanda Everett. The chase is on to find Avalon, but to get there, Lara must first find Thor's hammer, and sets out to numerous locations to find it such as the Mediterranean Sea, the Tombs of Mexico, the Arctic, and many more. The plotline from the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions is pretty much intact here, and honestly, I've always liked the story, as it does perfectly end Laura's arc in this timeline. The same voice actors from the previous games all return here, and they do all do a fine job in bringing their respective characters to life. But the one that really steals the show is the doppelganger herself. This character is my favorite villain from the Tomb Raider series. Lara's evil duplicate. She's just so damn cool. Any character that can routinely kick the crap out of Lara Croft is top tier in my book. Hashtag bring back the doppelganger. Can we get that start on Twitter and get that trending please? Now off to the gameplay, and here's where things get tricky. Underworld uses a different game engine than the one that was used in Legend and Anniversary. God damn it. <clears throat> Uh, this game is of course stripped down from the PS3 and Xbox 360 ones, which is not surprising at all. But to my surprise, the levels play out very differently. I must have just forgotten about that when I played this game a long time ago. So this definitely threw me for a loop. Oh, damn it! But this is both a good thing and a not so good thing. I do appreciate I'm trying to offer something unique, but some levels are way too easy to get through. On the other hand... Uh... My biggest issue for me was the controls. They just did not feel as responsive as a game like this needs them to be. More often than not, Lara just felt a second slower, which can make all the difference. So I end up seeing this a lot. Look, I know I'm not the best gamer out there, and I may be getting slower in my old age, but I still know how to play games, and the lack of responsive controls can make this more of a chore for me to play. Oh, come on! Ugh. But despite all that, there is one very good thing about this version of Tomb Raider Underworld. Something that this game offers that the other ones don't. A motorcycle with an automatic machine gun! <laughs> Honey, if you're watching this video, I want this for my birthday. So hey, I can't hate a game that has this. The music and sound effects were transferred well enough from the more powerful versions. 
For the most part during the gameplay, the game is silent until something major happens, such as enemies appearing, or a new pathway being revealed, etc. I feel this was a smart tactic, kind of a less is more approach. The sound effects are all on point as well, from Lara's grunts, to the monster's roars, to the motorcycle's engines, to Lara's splats. Yeah, if you haven't guessed, I experienced that quite a bit with this game. But, at least this part was done well enough. You know, there's a certain undeniable charm when it comes to the PlayStation 2 graphics. Now, I played my PlayStation 2 quite a bit back in the day. It was with this era where in-game characters started to look more realistic. There's just something about that pre-HD time. Lara's character model here is fine. Obviously not as detailed as she looks in the PS3 one, of course, but it still works for the limitations on the system. I really couldn't complain about the graphics either. They really did get as much as they could out of the system. Now this is an acquired taste, of course, as some younger gamers may not get the appeal of the PS2 graphics, but for elder statesmen such as myself, it was a nice nostalgic trip. So now it's time for the final call. This is game a buy or sell. Decent PS2 era graphics and storyline. A sluggish feeling Lara Croft. Motorcycle with automatic gun. I do have to give this game credit. For a PlayStation 2 game, it's okay. It's still playable, and you can still have a good Tomb Raider experience with it. But is it a game I would revisit? Oh no. I'll stick to the version that's on my Xbox One right now, thank you very much. But if you do have a PlayStation 2 stored in your closet, and you feel like dusting off, well, then I say this game is worth playing. At least trying out. For curiosity's sake, anyway. Just don't pay through the nose for it. Anyway. I am Eugene Morris of the Brotherhood of Gaming.com. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and to visit our Teespring store to check out our TBOG merch shop. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep on gaming. We'll see you next time.